competition fish. With two large hooks, called a taparino, is the lure used to capture the sporty, fighting game fish which inhabit the waters of this angler's paradise, where almost all species of the finest big game fish are found in abundance. Hardly have the lines been unreeled when you feel the thrill of your first strike. Oftentimes, one passes through a school of yellowfin tunas, and so little fishing has been done in these waters that it is not uncommon for every line to be struck at the same time by one of these gamey fish. And it is some sport to pull them into the boat just as fast as you possibly can. Not so bad for an hour sport. Enough fish for one of Wake Island's famous fish barbecues beneath the full moon and brilliant stars of a tropical night. It is but a short sail out to the coral gardens. Nowhere else in the world is there such crystal clear water as Wake's Lagoon and such a magnificent and brilliant array of hundreds of tropical fish which live in and about the great coral heads. Here we find new thrills and greater beauties in a fantastic shimmering world beneath the sea. By putting on watertight sea goggles, one is able to invade Father Neptune's kingdom and discover in its clear coral pools hidden treasures of unbelievable splendor. Beneath the surface, like a dream, a new and fantastic world becomes instantly apparent with its gardens of coral and curious inhabitants. Everywhere, there are countless varieties of gaily colored fish which shine with the brilliance of jewels. These exotic creatures are a colorful type of trigger fish and have the Hawaiian name of Huma Huma Nuka Nuka Apua'a, which have figured so frequently in some of the present day songs as the fish that go swimming by. There seems to be no limit to the sizes, shapes, colors, and markings with which nature has adorned some of these lovely specimens. This fellow only needs legs to give his brown spotted body the appearance of a caricature of a cow. There are so many amazing varieties of sea life that every coral head seems to produce its own lovely kind. This brilliant specimen too, which looks so much like a huge goldfish, is really a squirrel fish. Where it ever got such a name is a mystery. Words seem inadequate to describe these gay looking fishes. Their exotic designs and colorings are so bizarre that one would almost believe them to be artificial. These are a type of butterfly fish and are so beautiful that the name seems quite appropriate, especially when it is called a saddled butterfly fish, due to the large black saddle-like marking on its back. Among the branches of coral live thousands of these little fish. Because of their striped markings, they are called prisoner fish. The pretty bright blue fish are called demoiselles. Another beautiful type of butterfly fish dwelling in these warm pools of Wake's Lagoon has the imposing name of Chetadon Setifer.
One of the most amazing creatures of the coral gardens is the hermit crab. The housing problem is one of his major difficulties. Having no shell of his own to protect his soft body, he must find one suitable to his needs. Finding one, he examines it carefully and assures himself that it has no other occupant. Satisfied, he snuggles into his new home and crawls away. But the undersea adventure must end. Having glimpsed this fantastic fairy garden of the deep, the memory of its magic beauty will linger forever. Wake Island, so newly added to the world's travel map, is already becoming a favorite vacation spot for travel-wise voyagers. A land reserved to those who fly, where every comfort and convenience, excellent food and expert attention are as much a part of your stay as the breathtaking sunsets, its rainbow waters, the friendly sun and the cool trade winds blowing from across a billion square miles of open sea, a unique wonderland unmatched on the face of the globe. It is with regret that we turn our sailboat into the setting sun, where the hotel and dinner beckon. Another isle and another day enjoyed to the fullest on this new high road of the sky. In 10 hours more, our great Lovely vistas, picturesque scenes greet you at every turn of the road. In the sun gold of a tropical sky, this beautiful coconut-covered island lies in the path of the velvety touch of the trade winds in the mid-Pacific. The old palace, built in the time when Spain owned this island, now is occupied by the American naval governor. The city of Agana streets display their beautiful heritage of the tropics in the flaming brilliance of the Royal Poinciana, which overshadows its quaint streets. The Poinciana is a favorite subject for artists to paint, and its flowery congregations warm the hearts of every visitor from cold countries. Who can help but thrill to that first sight of Asia? Its curious blend of modern European and unchanging Oriental is ever apparent on all sides. Fortunately situated at the mouth of the Canton River, Macau was for centuries a bustling port for European merchants trading in China. Macau's beautiful boulevard, Avenida Republica, resembles some European resort of the sunny Mediterranean, but this illusion is shattered by the rickshaws, uniquely Chinese, which are one of the city's main methods of transportation. For a few pennies, a Chinese coolie will run you to any part of the town in a few minutes. Many lovely old temples add their exotic appearance to the city. One of the most beautiful, the temple of the goddess Ama, queen of heaven, after whom Macau was named, is centuries older than the Portuguese occupation. Inside, the natives burn their joysticks to appease some one of their many Buddhas. The highly decorated entrance is typical of many similar such doorways all over the Celestial Empire. Just outside the city is the main road from China, only a few miles away. In the early hours of the morning, this road is busy with Chinese trudging along on their way to and from the marketplaces heavily burdened with loads of vegetables, fruits, and merchandise, which most of them carry balanced on a pole over their shoulders. Manpower is cheap in China, so everything is transported by these natives. Even a coffin is carried on poles to its last resting place. For hours upon end, one can watch this interesting pageant of toiling humans. Firecrackers is another of Macau's important industries. Millions of dollars' worth are sent each year to all parts of the world. Thousands of poor find part-time employment in their homes preparing the empty spills. This crude but effective machine rolls several hundred a day. The empty spills are filled with fuses and powder. The open ends glued up, the finished firecrackers are put out into the sun to dry. The Chinese use them to scare away devils from their many ceremonies, pageants and processions.
Many festivals take place around these temples. Large oriental banners and flower-bedecked shrines are carried through the streets to the weird music of a Chinese orchestra. Evil spirits are always supposed to follow these processions, so the superstitious people believe they can scare them away with a terrific-looking apparition in the form of a lion-faced dragon. They give life to this monster in carrying on a wild dance through the street. The principal industry at Macau is fishing, in which it is estimated about 50,000 Orientals are engaged. They come and go every day in the junks, seagoing native ships with their incredibly ancient queer rig sails. So numerous are they that the entire harbor and coastline is constantly filled with them. These picturesque crafts with their low bows and high sterns give the appearance that they are sailing backwards, yet the Chinese navigate them with the greatest of skill and apparent ease. Everywhere, sights and sounds and incidents lure us to stay a while longer in this unusual city of the East. But Hong Kong, only 40 miles away, beckons us on. As the great engines of our flying clipper ships lift us once again into the sky above the China Sea, we are but a few minutes from Victoria Island, upon which the great British city of Hong Kong is situated. Misty islands floating in the blue dot the waters of the tremendous bay into which China's great Pearl River empties. Our great clipper, in less than a week, has taken us 9,000 miles from San Francisco to Hong Kong. Now, as we land upon Hong Kong's bay, we cannot help but thrill to this great adventure, so smoothly, so expertly.